Hey, it's me, Dunes on the Tree, and welcome back to another Manudox tutorial. Today, we are going to have a look at using webhooks within our bot. This video is proudly sponsored by Oxide Hosting. With this hosting company, you can never go wrong. They provide outstanding customer support and all for a low price. Their services range from website hosting to Minecraft server hosting. If you are interested in them, be sure to check out the link in the description below. This was suggested a while ago by Ainge on the Discord, uh, actually the 27th of August. Just as a quick fact, today is the 16th of November 2019, so you know how old this video is. So let's ha take a look at how we can use webhooks within our Discord bot. In JDA3, there used to be a webhook client feature. Uh, this feature has been removed in JDA4, and it has been moved to its own package named Discord Webhooks. As you can see, uh, Discord Webhooks originally part of JDA. This library provides easy to use bindings for the Discord Webhook API. We can hit the download button to get it from JCenter. And we're gonna hit Gradle and just copy this. And when we go into our code, we just paste it down and we can import the changes. Next up we're going to open up our environment file and we're gonna create a new key in here which is the web oh that's wrong which is the web hook underscore URL. So now let's start by creating a web hook within Discord. You're gonna go to the channel, gonna hit edit channel, then you're gonna hit webhooks and create a web hook. I'm just gonna leave everything on default and just copy the URL and hit save. Right now in our end file we're gonna paste this and I'm gonna remove the canary dot because I am using Discord canary. Next up we are going to create a new command and this command is going to be called webhook command. This im Implement I command and we're gonna overwrite the methods that we need. The name will be webhook and the help will be send a webhook message as your name. Usage explanation mark explanation mark webhook message. So let's go back to the webhook documentation. As you can see, we need to create a webhook client and we can do it in two ways, using the builder or the factory method. I want to create a daemon thread for our webhook, so we're going to use the builder. So we can just uh, copy this part on our clipboard already. And what we're going to do, we're going to make a private final webhook client. I'm going to call it client we're gonna import that class and then we're gonna alt insert a constructor and that is not correct what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste these things in and we're gonna say builder dot build here we get the URL from our config so config dot get and we're gonna say webhook underscore url and let's give the thread the webhook thread let's give it a nice name next up we are going to define two variables which are the arguments and the channel and this way we can send messages to the channel and receive our arguments after that we want to check if the arguments are empty and if they are we're just gonna say missing arguments next up we need to get the author of the message so ctx.get author and we're gonna turn this into a variable and i'm gonna call it a user next up we need to build the webhook message we want to send so webhook message builder 
builder equals a new webhook message builder. First off, we're gonna set the username, which is user user dot get name. What you also could do over here is get the effective name of the member. So that will be their nickname if they have a nickname or their username if they don't have a nickname set. But this choice is entirely up to you. Next up we want to give the webhook an a avatar URL. So set avatar URL which is the user dot effective avatar URL. But now we're going to do something special. If they have a GIF avatar, JDA will automatically return the GIF to you. But that's not what we want. We always want to send the PNG to the webhook and with a size of around 512, which is good enough for that small icon. Because if we look at get effective avatar URL, you can see uh, it gets the avatar URL. But if they have no avatar set, uh, avatar URL will return null and then you get a default avatar URL and otherwise you'll get their avatar URL but as you can see over here uh, if it starts with a underscore so if they have an animated avatar it will return a gif instead of a png and we want a png lastly we need to set the content of the message so set com content we're gonna string dot join on the spaces and we're gonna pass in our args. All we need to do next is say client dot send builder dot about and send returns a completable future. Uh, of a read-only message, but that's only if we set wait to true. So if you saw over here, builder.setWait true, then you will get the message returned. Uh, but because we have not enabled that, we won't get the message returned from this. Lastly, let's register the command in our command manager. Add command new webhook command. And let's run the bot. So now that our bot has booted up, we can say exclamation mark, exclamation mark, webhook. It won't do anything. But if we say uh, exclamation, mark, exclamation mark, webhook, a message, you can see that it will send a webhook message with my avatar and my username, and it exactly types what I said. But if we are going to look at our channel and the webhooks, as you can see, it still says Captain Hook over here. Because webhooks allow you to send a custom avatar and username while executing it, which is really nice. So that is how you can use webhooks within your Discord bot. If you like this video, leave a like. Subscribe to Menudos if you haven't already. And I see you guys next time with another tutorial. Bye!